Hi, everyone. My name is Caesar Williams, and I am the artistic director of The Fire This Time. And I just want to thank all of you, all of you for checking in and coming and watching the Fireside Chat. Uh, we are honored to have you join us uh, online today. But I am super excited to welcome season 15 playwright, Joelle Renee Scoville, whose play Ethel and Ethel will be featured as part of the 10 Minute Play Festival. Joelle, welcome. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. Um, we are so excited to have your play Ethel and Ethel in the in the festival this year. It's a beautiful, I, I'll, I'll say all the things and I'll say it a little bit of the thing that surprised me about it. It's a beautiful period piece. Uh, it's a love story about two individuals, one famous person, Ethel Waters that we know, and, and some of us know about Ethel Williams, the dancer, and, and their love story. All of that is in there. But then the kind of surprise is the play is hilarious. It's a yeah. hilarious play. It's a hilarious period love story. And um, it's uh, when you when you know the history, there is a little it's a little tragic and sad, sad. Mm -hmm. the time period that they lived in and, and, and all the things that were going on at the time. Uh, they weren't really able to um, be together the way that they would have liked. Uh, but your play does a lovely job of of expressing their love as well as giving us a tinge of what was to come in their relationship, you know. And so just congratulations on getting all of that in a short play. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, I, I, I would like to start, I guess, by asking you uh, to just tell us about your play. Um, yeah, um, as you said, it's uh, Ethel Waters, the famous, brilliant Ethel Waters, and one of the dancers in her show, Ethel Williams. And they are celebrating an anniversary of being a hidden couple. And um, it, it really discusses a couple of things. It discusses um, having to hide who you really are. Um, and having this one small space that they could both exist in and and live in the world that they wish they could live in. And it also addresses the reality that women had limited choices, that um, marriage was always what was expected, marriage between a man and a woman during that time, and that women did have to rely on being someone's wife in order to financially sustain themselves. And Ethel Waters was a woman of independent means because she was so successful as a performer that she was able to live outside of what was expected and required. And um, you mentioned that it's very funny. Thank you. That means that the jokes landed. Um, I, I am very much an old school person and I love um, 1920s and 30s zany comedies. And I rarely get to see Black women be funny and silly. We always, I feel like, tend to have to be strong and stoic. And I just wanted a few minutes, I wanted to give an actress an opportunity to do crazy comedy and fall and drop things and make <laughs> mistakes. Um, so... So thanks for saying it's funny. Oh, it's very, I enjoy it. I enjoyed it very much reading it and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing it on stage. Uh, when people see the play on stage, what would you like them to uh, walk away with or to know about the world that they didn't know before seeing your play? I would like for them to know that women are full and whole, um, that we, there are various sides of us that the 1920s and 30s had a lot of women that were existing and moving forward. And I also would like for them to know that love is love and um, that regardless of what your own personal, social, political, religious ideas are and beliefs, um, love is love and, and, we are who we love. Like I, I, it really is a, it's a love story and, and that love is exciting and we all express it and show it differently. Um, 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I'm, but yeah. So that's what I hope. I hope that people walk away and, and see that love is love and, and support love. Yeah. I think, I think they will. I mean, I think it's kind of this, like I said, this beautiful love story uh, about these two women back in the early 20th century, you know, wrapped in this zany comedy. So it'll be very accessible to to all people. I, I, that's my that's my hope, at least. So, Joelle, uh, what other projects are you currently working on? Is there something you're excited about or, or passionate about? Yes, I am. Um, this past summer, one of my collaborators, I write musical theater and most of my musicals take place in the past. Okay. And um, one of our musicals, um, Two in One, a Harlem musical with Loose Morals, with my composer, Jenna Gillespie Bird, this past year, we were Eugene O'Neill finalists and um, Relentless Award honorable mentions with it. And it's a piece about women during the Harlem Renaissance trying to carve out their own space and it's a love triangle and it's a queer love story and it deals with um, colorism, white passing, um, gender roles. And it's just this really exciting. I'm so excited about this piece and I've been working on it since 2013. And um, and I just I, I love the Harlem Renaissance and I love black history. And I just fell in love with these women that were coming out of the great migration and just blazing their own path of being modern women. And then um, another piece that I'm working on is with two other collaborators called Flop House that addresses the housing crisis that's going on in America. And it's a it's a beautiful story about eight residents that live in one of the last flop houses or single room occupancy houses in the Bowery District. And their struggle of trying to fit into a society that has forgotten them. How, how did the pandemic impact you as an artist, if at all? It impacted me a lot. I felt it was necessary that my art became artivism. Um, I felt like it was really important that I started, that I had a responsibility and a moral obligation to write pieces that served purpose and that sparked people to act, whether to be better humans on this earth or to reach out and find out what they can do within their community. And, and I really think that one of the reasons why society continues to, for lack of a better word, struggle is the lack of knowing our history. And I do believe that history repeats itself and so I feel like if we were learning and knowing and and expressing and discussing that history, that we would not continue to make the same abhorrent mistakes that we're making. Yes, yes. I love that. I loved it. Where, where, where are you from? Where you I, from? I'm a Southern girl. I was born in Lafayette, Louisiana and grew up in Houston, Texas. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm a very much a Southern girl. Well, did you enjoy did you did you enjoy uh growing up down south? Um, I enjoyed it until I learned more about it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Um, until I learned the history of the South and mm -hmm. um the history in regards to black Americans in the South. Mm -hmm. And then I knew definitely that it was not necessarily a place that that was that was good for me. Mm -hmm. Um so I then, of course, eventually moved to the West Coast, but finally ended up in New York, where I've wanted to be since I was a child. Oh, okay. Are you are you enjoying living in New York so far? Um, sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> great. <laughs> sometimes it's amazing and wonderful, yes. and um, sometimes it's really hard. It's hard. A hard city. As an artist, it's hard. Um. But I'm I'm grateful that I'm finally here. It's um, it's I'm very fortunate to be here. If if you had a time machine, if you could go to Target and, and buy a time machine, and assuming it worked properly, and you could go back in time and uh talk to your childhood self, what would you say? 
Oh, I would say there's no expiration on dreams. Mm, I love that. That's powerful. Yeah. There's no, you can start today, you can start. wherever you are. You can start wherever you are. Uh, if you were not a writer, what would you be doing? I would be fighting for mental health rights. I'd be fighting for advocacy for mental health. And I would be fighting for advocacy for um, women's health rights. It's I'm incredibly, incredibly passionate about us as individuals having autonomy over our bodies. And I think that if more people, particularly Black people, had access to mental health care to deal with all that our gener all the generational trauma that we have experienced as a people. Um, it's I'm very, very, very passionate about that. Yeah, that's beautiful. As a member of the LES, which is known as being a very conservative uh, religion, in writing the plays that you do, I, I am curious. I mean, I don't even have a question as much as I'm just curious. Yeah, I and I and I and here here's what it is. Without getting religious. Um, I believe that we as all these people believe that everyone is born with the light of Christ and we believe that Christ loves everyone. And so I do not subscribe to this, this, this new religious ideology that Christ does not love queer people, that Christ does not love black, Asian, Hispanic people. I, I that would totally go against every single thing that he taught. So when I'm writing, I'm like, there, there should be love stories for, they're just, I don't know what we're doing. Like there should be love stories. There should be musicals. There should be poetry, plays, films, um, songs about just love. And, and I, and I, you know, I've always been, you know, and I originally grew up Baptist. Mm -hmm. So I converted to Mormonism and not to get married. I just, I was at BYU and, you know, that's what you do, I guess. But I, I really do have a strong belief in my faith, but I've just always been so socially aware. And that could be because as a black woman, I've been other othered before. And, and so it just, I can't imagine not I can't imagine a world without my queer brothers. I just, I couldn't imagine it. I can't imagine a world without other religions. I couldn't imagine, I wouldn't want to exist in that world. So my, my work reflects my beliefs and yeah, I'm, I'm very honest about that. And I always make that very clear. Yes, I am a black woman. And yes, I am socially liberal. And all are welcome at my table. Like, that's just really. And, and if we disagree, let's disagree civilly, but I'm not kicking you out. Because I'm not so. Very nice. That's great. That is wonderful. That is wonderful. Is there uh, anything else you'd like uh, the good folks to know or you'd like to share about yourself, about your work, about the play, anything? I feel very privileged that I get to work on my craft as a writer. And and I I always want everyone to feel welcome and to feel included and to feel like I, I know that sometimes when I see shows I feel like, did this writer read my diary? Like how, you know, and I would love for people to feel like, like as if we had a conversation and that I heard them. And um, I really, I, I think that we as women don't get enough credit for the contributions that we make to society. And I'm trying to change that with my work. Beautiful. Well, on that note, I just want to thank you so much, Joelle, for taking time to chat with me. Uh, I want to thank our viewers who are watching the Fireside Chat. And I'd like to ask each and every one of you to please come check out Joelle Renee Scoville's play, Ethel and Ethel, as part of the 10-Minute the Play Festival at the Farthest Time. 
We are running January 18th through January 28th at the Wild Project on the Lower East Side. I guarantee you, if you show up, you will have a great time. And have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.